Sir, uh, kindly share us uh, your complete experience with Dutch Ultrasket uh, 2022. Um, so, um, I've wanted to go to the, the Dutch Ultra for a while. Um, mm -hmm. I have like a bucket list. So, one of the bucket lists is juggling nine balls. But one that has been on my was getting the plaque for 250 mile club. Oh. Um, so that was, that's been my bucket list goal. Mm -hmm. Um. So I tried to enter the 2019 and it sold out incredibly quickly. So mm -hmm. I did not get it played. Mm -hmm. um, and then it was uh, cancelled due to COVID for two years. Mm -hmm. um, and it finally came back. And I was so excited. And I was actually, I was on the bus to the skate park uh, to skate with friends. Mm -hmm. And I seen Lena's post that said, um, tickets go live. Registration goes live in cool. 10 minutes. Do not forget. Cool. And I literally seen it on the bus and I was like, thank God you reminded me. <laughs> I sent her a message being like, thank you. I got, and I ended up getting a spot for the 2022 Dutch Ultra. I was That's ecstatic incredible. on the bus. Yeah. Uh, I had to thank Lena for that, for reminding me. Cool. Um, but um, yeah, if you're a newcomer uh, mm -hmm. to Dutch Ultra, um, Eric de Norman, he's a part of the organization mm -hmm. of uh, Dutch Ultra Skate. Uh, he's mm -hmm. a part of the Dutch Disc Skaters. Mm -hmm. um, he um he helps um give advice and tells you everything about the track and everything before um mm -hmm. before the event before you go mm -hmm. um so um he shows how the the track works what direction uh, where the um the bathrooms and the showers are and uh, where you set up uh, your tents and mm -hmm. stuff like mm -hmm. that um and what kind of pace he, uh, what kind of pace you should do for what you're trying to achieve yeah mm -hmm. uh, depending on your goal is and stuff mm. which is really nice um so then i uh flew to the netherlands with nicole mm -hmm. um and it was my first time in the netherlands so i spent five days uh staying with uh a couple a friend of ours and uh, mm -hmm. they live in um in amsterdam so we stayed with them for five days and cool. i went sightseeing uh in amsterdam mm -hmm. um and then we got um we stayed in a hotel um the night before um uh, ultra mm -hmm. uh Eric was very kind. He found um, Stan Becker and uh, Danielle Van Veen, who um, they uh, they were staying in the same hotel as us. Mm -hmm. um, Stan and uh, Danielle are uh, regulars at the Dutch Ultra. Mm -hmm. uh, Stan's part of the du uh, uh, Dutch Distance Skaters, and Danielle's part of Misfits, uh, mm -hmm. the crew. Um, so it was really nice that we uh, could meet them at the hotel, and they, mm -hmm. they were uh, uh, really nice and friendly and welcoming to us um mm -hmm. but they said there was a dinner the night before um for uh just uh, people to meet up mm -hmm. um and they invited us along which was incredibly kind of them i couldn't i didn't um, believe it um That's awesome. so yeah we went to this dinner and i got to meet um eric and oh. um like essentially my heroes and stuff like that and um, oh. rick Prom, leonard van der peppel oh. uh, andrew andras i was sitting <laughs> at the table and andrew <laughs> for me and i would like <laughs> couldn't believe it um, That's yeah awesome. um i was there um i'm trying to think of anyone else um but yeah like if i didn't if i forget anyone i'm sorry um but yeah there was a lot of people there was like 16 of us for dinner That's um awesome. which was, yeah it was really nice and uh, lonica was there as well uh lonica leonard um Memorable. yeah there was like yeah like the whole the whole dutch distance skater crew um, and a few and a few others like Andy and Adi and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it was really mm -hmm. nice. Um, and yeah, it was at that um, at that dinner we got we rent a taxi to get back to the hotel, mm -hmm. and we asked him, um, "Could you pick us up at seven thirty in the morning um, to drive us to Ultra?" Mm -hmm. And um, he he said him and his friend um, they work together as a taxi, um, so one does daytime and one does nighttime. Mm -hmm. um, so he does evenings and his friend does mornings. Mm -hmm. So um, he gave us his friend's number and um, we had a, a lift from uh, the hotel to the track, which is cool, very nice. Cool, cool, That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. And uh, during the races, like you get to talk to people or like Lena was actually supplying uh, bananas and all the energy stuff for people. I got one of those bananas. <laughs> oh, cool. How was your experience in the track? Like, talking to i mean uh, so racing we, we get to the track and mm -hmm. i just see like everyone has uh, like boards with um 
uh, with like all their gear, all their food in boxes on the boards, pushing it towards the track and stuff like that. Okay. I've seen, uh, I've seen Tim um, with his uh, his uh, trailer, the the, uh, uh, the uh-huh. drop. Yeah, yeah. Back- that was the first thing I saw was Tim with his uh, ah. his Rolls Royce uh, ah. trailer. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So I get to the track, and yeah, it's nice seeing everyone there. The um, we set up our tent. I got my uh, board set up and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and once the once the tent, um, Nicole's space, uh, like her sleeping area and like mm-hmm. her her station for passing me food and getting drinks and stuff ready. And once mm-hmm. that was set up and my board was set up. Um, I had to go meet everyone. Um, that cool. was I like uh, like thirty minutes or something before the race began. Mm. Um, yeah, I got to meet all the people I looked up to. I got to meet Lena for the first time after her uh, sending me the board. Mm-hmm. Um, I got to meet Adrian O, who skated around the world. I got to meet him. He was at the ultra. Mm. Um, um, Panta, Panta was one a special yeah. one that I wanted to meet. Yeah. Um, because he always does a live stream before yeah. the old year and oh. he uh, has to meet every new person veteran yeah uh, and um yeah he was the first person when i was in distance groups on facebook and mm-hmm. um, he was the first one to add me as a friend and he talked to me uh, a bit. very welcoming um, and friendly yeah Good guy. it was really nice talking to panther and lena and adrian and just getting to meet all all the people i looked up to cool uh, which is great cool, cool. um and then yeah, we had the, the group photo of everyone together. Awesome. Um, then, yeah, I um, I stretched, I got ready to go. We all lined up. Mm-hmm. We went off. Um, and, yeah, it's um, – for me, I was in the 300-mile uh, pack. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't expect to be. I thought I was going for 250 miles. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was um, the pace they were doing was – uh, the pace that was casual for me mm-hmm. um so i stayed in this group mm-hmm. um yeah so you get to talk to a few people going along like that are at different paces you get like a few passing sentences or like mm-hmm. some words of uh, encouragement and mm-hmm. stuff like that cool, cool. Um, but you usually find a group of people um that are doing the same pace or the same goal as you mm-hmm. um and that's like kind of who you stick with so i was in the 300 mile pace group mm-hmm. and um, People I got to talk to in that group, um, like um, Felipe Escalfaro, mm-hmm. um, he was um, nice. Um, I didn't understand that everyone stayed in two lanes, like mm-hmm. for the group. Uh, like uh, you must stay on the left or the right when you're in the 300 mile pace group. Mm-hmm. I thought of racing lines on the track, so I would go from outside to inside to try and keep oh. the most speed oh, in the oh. corners. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so like I maybe like cut one person off by accident, and he told me to like this is like, this, like like u- ultra etiquette, you know, like how to skate with people so close together. Because I'd never, I'm the only distance skater in Ireland, so I've never skated at this pace with so many people. Mm-hmm. Um, so he was very kind and uh, gave me like a rundown of uh, how to di- how to like skate in this pack. Uh, okay really so nice. you if you're going fast you're going to uh, stick to the left is it uh, of the track yes okay yeah uh, if you're going um, slower you're going to stick yeah. on to the right oh yeah on the yeah, pass on the right okay. uh, as, as you can. Cool. um yeah the the pace group say for 300 miles or 250 they start and it's two lines of people I and they go and the front people taking all the wind they will switch and it will constantly switch and stuff okay. like that. Okay, um, cool. So it's a group effort. Um, cool. It's really nice. It's cool. really, but like everyone pushes, everyone switch pushes uh. like Mongo, uh. Uh, everyone Mongo, and everyone pumps. Uh. So like there's feet on both sides of you and there's wheels going like this. <laughs> it's a real experience just being like, I, how much space do I have? I'm trying to push and like, oh no, there's already someone's foot there. Oh. Or something, you know. Uh, it's not that close. Like it's it's manageable for sure, but just in the beginning, yeah. I, it was a surreal. I never experienced this. That's cool. Um, but it's cool how um, we all work in unison. We like you can't pump in sync, you mm-hmm, know. Mm-hmm. And so like people would be like this. Yeah, and stuff, yeah, but yeah. You manage, like you, you stick together. Um, and then I had nice chats and nice conversations with uh, Michelle Lammers as well, and uh-huh. he was in the three mile pace group. Mm-hmm. And then um. Yeah, um, for me, um, 
Florian, um, the guy who uh, won the mm. Dutch Ultra mm. 2022, mm. and he was the guy I chatted with the most. And cool. we talked and we skated together. Cool. Um, I think for 19 or 20 hours of that ultra. Oh. Um, so we were just going around. Um, so the 300 mile group went around and around for, I don't know, 14 hours or something like that. Oh. And That's Leonard long. led the pack because um leonard wanted to try he was attempting the world record um mm -hmm. at this ultra mm -hmm. um so he went back and then um at some point it started to rain i'm not sure if it's before or after but leonard um uh, took away from the pack after uh, the 300 mile pace group to keep mm -hmm. uh, a world record pace mm -hmm. and at like 14 to 16 hours in i still felt okay so mm. i continued with Leonard. Mm -hmm. um mm. I, we skated for two hours together and it started to rain we were in the rain together yeah, okay and we didn't talk much because leonard was like very uh like focused, uh, focused yeah. on trying to get the world uh the world record mm -hmm. and um we skated for two hours together we got we lapped the 300 mile group once mm -hmm. and, and after two hours i i couldn't keep that Leonard's pace anymore and I literally I was okay. like you're a machine I can't do this anymore okay. like good luck on your good luck on your endeavors I hope you get the world record but like you I cannot do this and I okay. fell back and then Florian and people found me the 300 mile group okay. and found me and I, I jumped back in with okay. them okay and then the the rain got heavier and heavier and okay. the, the group uh dispersed there wasn't people anymore there was for a time, it was just um, me, uh, Florian, and Shumi mm. um, going around, the three of us. Mm. And then at some point, um, we lost Shumi, and it was just me and Florian um, mm. going around up until 18, 19 hours in. Um, and then, um, because I had lapped the 300-mile um, group, me and Florian skating together, mm. I was one lap ahead of him, but we were skating always at the same pace. Mm. Um, Together. and then yeah through the night it was crazy like you had your lights and everything yeah i had a light i had to buy one for this event mm -hmm. and and yeah and yeah it's it's a dark track it was challenging they I have little light on the sides so you oh. can see the edge oh. but um in the edge like there's not much to see okay um, and yeah we skated around for like 19 20 hours um and Florian stopped to get some food, like mm -hmm. some hot food. Mm -hmm. um, I, like, I'm not sure if I will get back up, but like, we'll see how this goes. Mm -hmm. um, but because he stopped and then he ended up getting back on the track, mm -hmm. we were no longer together. We were at different points in the track. Okay. Um, and when I, when we kept each other going, man, mm -hmm. like I couldn't have had a better partner. And um, we just, we talked and just uh, we, we were we just willed each other on it's okay we're this this much ahead of pace we're we've this many laps done we've this much more to go and just great uh conversation because this is my first time meeting him talking mm -hmm. about each other's mm -hmm. lives what we're going to do mm -hmm. anything to distract from the rain and the pain you cool, know cool. Uh, yeah when you mentioned pain i understand you build up lactic acid after 100 kilometers uh, i read it on the newspaper article so i had never experienced this ever in my life oh ever and 10, 10 hours into Dutch Ultra, my uh -huh. calves felt like they were made of concrete. Oh, boy. Uh -huh. that they were just completely stiff. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, um, once I lost uh, Florian, mm -hmm. and my pace dropped, my will dropped and stuff like that. Uh -huh. um, and then Stan Becker came around on, um, uh, on, on a push bike, on, on a race bike. Mm -hmm. And he s told me that um, after 200 miles... Mm -hmm. um leonard had quit because he could not achieve a world record he mm -hmm. could have run probably 300 miles or mm -hmm. maybe like 290 or something mm -hmm. but he was like i cannot do the record i've mm -hmm. done 300 miles before mm -hmm. why would i um put this on my body mm -hmm. um so he um um he stopped and stan came around and told me this and mm -hmm. said because he stopped you the two of you lapped the 300 mile group you are in first place if oh. you keep this you will hit 300 miles cool and i, I was like what no Born no away. way <laughs> it's my first yeah. year i'm the first yeah. Jewish person here like as i said i just went for the plaque mm -hmm. i before the race i checked who had done 250 miles there was mm -hmm. 10 to 12 people 
who had done that or more, like 290, 300 and stuff like that. So I was expecting 10th or 12th place, <laughs> you know? Um, and yeah, Stan came around on the bike and was just like, you're in first. And I was oh. like, what? And I continued around and then um, I found Marvin. So Marvin was... Mm. Uh, he had chilled a little bit throughout the rain, so he had some energy stored. Mm -hmm. um, so he started going around at like 18 kilometers per hour, very um, like like 19 hours into the race. Mm -hmm. um, it was his first two, actually. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it was. It was crazy. <laughs> um, we had a bit also, me and Marvin, in the 300 mile group, mm -hmm. but it wasn't until this point that we um, we really got to like know each other. Um, I cool. seen him skating around at 18 kilometers an hour, and I was like. If this guy can do it, I can do it. Cool. And uh, my pace went from 15 to 18. Mm. And me and uh, Marvin skated together um, mm. for one or two hours. Mm. Um, and it was a lot of fun. We got to talk. Mm. And it was funny. That we were both on um, uh, MK boards and mm. stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, then at some point I lost Marvin again. Mm. Um, and I seen Florian. And Florian said, like, we were all dead at the, like we didn't want to go anymore the rain it was like 12 yeah. mil of rain yeah. totally four understandable hours or so. yeah um so yeah i was always one lap ahead of florian florian said he would let like me have the win like the two of us just skate together me one lap ahead uh -huh. but marvin wanted florian's second place so uh -huh. marvin kept skating which meant florian had to keep skating you oh know? yeah yeah we, I couldn't stop skating to to stay in first and this was what was going on. The three of us were not together. We were three of us separate. But okay. We all, knew, three of us knew this. <laughs> that like getting past each other. We knew this is what was happening. Okay. And um, people from the, the pits, like Lena, it was like um, Marvin's pit crew and stuff like that. Mm. And Nicole was and, like the pit crews to talk and like yell stuff at each other. Mm. So we heard stuff and they we would say it to each mm. other and mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I skated past my my goal of 250 that's what i wanted to get to uh -huh. and then I, I heard this news of like oh i can like uh i heard the news that florian will let me like have the the win <laughs> but marvin won't let him have second place so florian can't stop to uh, uh his second so um at some point like i stopped at uh at the at the the line the lap line mm -hmm. um because asked it you have to finish a lap with the tracker on your ankle mm -hmm. so you stop yeah. Yeah. um and so i stopped and at this point and um, it was yeah 21 hours in so nicole was asleep and um, in her tent like trying to get some rest have a nap nice. and she found uh uh malin's boyfriend um and they because they're from the, uh he's from the uk oh yeah yeah spoke. oh Oh, you'd first, um, uh, Nicole, they, like, yeah, yeah, okay, I remember yeah. now, after talking to yeah, Madeline, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they found each other, and they became friends, so cool. when when Cam took a break, Nicole would help Marlon, and then when Nicole took a break, Cam would help me. <laughs> um, nice. But it got to the 21-hour uh, mark, and I stopped, and Nicole was asleep, and I couldn't see anyone, and Cam was there, uh -huh. and... Uh, I said to Cam, like, I said it so fast. And mm. um, I was like, I'm in first place. Florian will let me win. And um, well, Marvin's getting his second, so he can't stop, which means I can't stop. Oh. And he said, like, my eyes were completely bloodshot. My eyes were red. Yeah. Um, my cheek, like, caved in, oh. like, lack of calories and stuff. And he said, my eyes didn't focus. It was like I was staring 10,000 miles away, you oh. know? And, so I kept my foot on the board and said all this to him at the line because I knew if I get off the board, I'm not getting back on. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was, I personally, I think I needed someone who had experience at ultras before, someone who has been there to mm -hmm. be like, am I fit to continue? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, in good uh, like uh, health, mm -hmm. good concern yeah, that I, yeah. I continue. Um, but it was Cam's first time, Malin's first time at Ultra as well, as yeah. well as mine and Nicole, as well yeah. as Marvin's. Yeah. So he's seen what I looked like, and he was just like, you need to sit down, and just grabbed me um, by the shoulders and walked me and sat me in a chair, and cool. I didn't get out of that chair afterwards. So nice. I skated for 21 hours. I got 419 kilometers or 216 wow. 
160 miles. Oh. Um, so in 21 hours, that is a pace of 19.95 kilometers, about 20, which is just under 300 mile pace. Yeah, yeah. And I honestly think if I had some like someone to tell me to keep going or like mm. you can do this, mm -hmm. um, I could I could have done another 30, 40 kilometers in wow. three hours. That's incredible. Um, I, 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 with my training, because I did the extra lap in that in that yeah, park, yeah. And I said my distance was good for 446 or 456 kilometers. Wow. And Florian, um, respectively, congrats to him. He won with 450. Uh -huh. um, so Matthew I think won. if... Where if, was Matthew if we won had in the scene? For the rest of it, I think we could have come like joint first, you cool. know, the two of us together on first but. Um, yeah, I had gotten past my 250 mile mm -hmm. goal. That was my bucket list. Like this has been <laughs> on my bucket list seven and years, eight years. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and then um, I seen Marvin continue skating, and then at some point, um, Marvin stopped. He did, he um, yeah. he couldn't skate anymore, and he stopped. And the two of us, I went over. Well, we could barely walk, but like. I think Nicole would say stuff to Lena and Lena would come over and say stuff to me, like, <laughs> like, uh -huh. uh, messenger. But yeah. yeah, it turned out and um, me and Marvin finished with the same distance uh -huh. and we were in second place and we uh -huh. both thought we were getting second place. Uh -huh. And then with 13 minutes left, Matthew Bond gets uh, two extra laps on oh, us. And, uh, I understand. Place. Okay. Yeah, um, it was. I think it's the best way. Um, it could have finished. Mm. I think, as I said, I, I think I could have come first. Mm -hmm. And if look back, um, I didn't have any hot food as well. Um, oh. I realized Nicole gave me chips, like hot chips at mm. some point, like fries. Mm -hmm. um, and um, that gave me loads of energy. So for next time, I will need hot food. I never thought of hot food. Just heat in your stomach gives you energy. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah. Um, it, it's the best way it could have been because Florian and Matthew are both experienced yeah. um, ultra skaters. They've yeah. done many before. Yeah. Um, so it's right for them to come first and second. Cool. And then it's just a, an amazing coincidence that two first timers at ultra, both on MK longboards, finish joint third together. It's an amazing moment um, that I'll never forget. That's um, awesome. And yeah, it, it, it's better this way because if I... If I didn't come joint third with Marvin, I don't think I would have such a friendship. Me and Marvin, we talk almost every day now. Cool. And um, I talk to Lane. So he added me into um, like the MK Dutch Ultra chats and stuff cool. like that. He's cool. been a real friend to me. Um, awesome. The day after Ultra, um, we they had a a dinner um, for people to meet up. So like as I said, you can't talk to everyone because mm -hmm. everyone goes at the pace. Mm -hmm. So this. So you can talk to everyone that has participated, whoever wants to come. Cool, cool. That's incredible. Really nice. I got to talk to many people that I'd never met, um, but they talked to me and like we had a great time. Yeah. That's a um, wonderful story, actually. I haven't uh, heard it in such a detail, you know, like about the Dutch yeah. Autos get 2022. And I also happened to hear the completion of a circle with, uh, you know, Marlene's story, which she told me on her interview. And I get yeah, to yeah. hear the complete story of in your interview. That's so incredible. Nice. So, yeah, it's really nice. <laughs> that yeah. was beautiful. Yeah, my friend was so kind to me. He, like... We went, me and Nicole went back to Amsterdam, mm -hmm. direct, like directly after the um, the ultra skate. Mm -hmm. Once the ceremony was finished, mm -hmm. um, we left and we got a taxi back to Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. And Marvin told us about this um, this dinner. And um, I like I was not in a state of like trying to get public transport. Like okay. I could not walk. I okay. could not use my legs. Okay. Um, so... Um, Marvin was kind enough to cool. offer to pick us up. So mm -hmm. he drove from his house, stopped off at Amsterdam, picked me and Nicole up and drove us back to Spandam That's uh, cool. to have dinner. Yeah, yeah. Marvin was so kind. Um, yeah. So yeah, he awesome. literally yeah. picked me up, went out of his way and picked me and Nicole up so we could experience this dinner. He, he just said, uh, I said, I don't think I could make it. And he offered the lift. And I was like, you don't have to do this. Like, you like, and he was like, it would mean a lot if you were there. Um, yeah, he's a so, cool guy. Yeah. yeah. Marvin's lovely. He's really kind. Um, I really, yeah, Marvin, I'm really happy that I call Marvin a friend now. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. He's a nice guy. 
thanks for sharing such yeah. a wonderful experience in such a great detail with us you know our audience of distance skating or the community of distance skating is going to love it yeah. so yeah yeah cuz it's it's not the the race you know it's the experience the 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 organization eric helping new people meeting yeah. all of the people like it, there's more to it than just a race yeah that's awesome that's awesome how it's great to know actually people. yeah, yeah. actually it's the people who make it you know uh uh, uh worthwhile uh, of a memory you know that's awesome that's awesome uh so uh, ha- have you uh, participated in misfits and flaming rune day in 2022 no i did okay. not compete in misfits or um thing um my two holidays uh, for that year was oh. um amsterdam to go to dutch ultra uh-huh. and then in august um i went to the european juggling convention in oh. um oh. so I, this is um how my money went so i did not have enough money to go um to uh, another couple of holidays okay races. okay how uh, what role the races you participated in 2022 other than uh, dutch ultra uh dutch ultra and all of the little the longboard series the Watch sprint series races. and the endurance series oh yeah. that's awesome that's awesome one silly question have you tried juggling with uh, longboard wheels like orangutan kegel kagmas yeah it works that with was. yeah you have wheels that are the same width as they are tall uh-huh. and like squares uh-huh uh, it works better and uh-huh. um, i've juggled four i think four maybe five and mm-hmm. um, but their urethane if they touch each other in the air <laughs> they just bounce yeah. everywhere the yeah. spheres bounce everywhere as well so yeah. uh, i've just done it for fun yeah like once or twice and then a wheel goes <laughs> somewhere yeah yeah i have had such experience when i was trying to you know uh, change my wheels i happened to uh, I mean, hard bounce. drop yeah it flies <laughs> through yeah so uh sir uh i have seen some electric scooters in your video do you use that in a regular basis do you like electric skateboards um No, I'm not a fan of electric skateboards mm-hmm. and uh scooters and stuff like that. And uh, if I see I don't mind people on normal scooters, but if mm-hmm. I'm on cycle lanes mm-hmm. and stuff like that, mm-hmm. when is on an electric bike or an mm-hmm. electric scooter, mm-hmm. um I tell them to learn to push. <laughs> uh, you know. Yeah. Um you got you got to keep fit, you know. Um yeah. Yeah. but um, the electric scooter is actually a friend of mine uh, Breen and mm-hmm. um, he's a childhood friend of mine. We've known each other since we were 5 years old. Mm-hmm. Uh we were going to the skate park together street skating when we were like 8 years old and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um he also longboards and he cruises and stuff like that. Um mm-hmm. but uh recently like last year or yeah, so, uh yeah, like a year ago um he got a electric scooter mm-hmm. um because I'm the only distance skater here no one can really kind of keep up with me on boards or bikes i can get um, it i can get it so he got the electric scooter so he Why? could like not specific people he can keep up keep up with me now uh-huh. um yeah green has um an eye for photography and videography and stuff oh, like that cool. um, so as of recently mm-hmm. um because posted much on social media but because of what happened in my life last year such big occasions and um, mm-hmm. i started posting and mm-hmm. now i uh, post like uh, yo-yo tricks and juggling tricks and skate videos and mm-hmm. um, so green is now like essentially my filmer for my ldp content oh that's um, awesome really nice camera he has like the eye for uh, videography and uh, uh, and photography and stuff like that mm-hmm. um so yeah he is he's like my filmer now and um, awesome. so yeah check out his stuff and yeah and um, like the videos that I'll be putting out and um, you'll see the quality like he's real good that's awesome can't wait for those videos uh so yeah. like uh i understand you have a great interest in carpentry and uh, creating something with wood and stuff like that so please tell us about your uh, you know creations your experience in building boards uh um So yeah, I um I did technical graphics in mm-hmm. secondary school, which was when I uh des- this is why I designed the custom board because I learned to do drawings like this in school. Mm-hmm. Um and once uh, the company I designed a board for um closed down was mm-hmm. one year 
before I finished school, before I did my exams. Mm-hmm. Um, once the company closed, I was like, uh, what do I want to do with my life? Mm-hmm. And I wanted to build skateboards. Mm-hmm. Um, so I found a course, Timber Product Technology. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is, uh, I essentially went to college to learn to build better skateboards. Is what I may want to do it for, but um, cool. yeah, it's giving me love for like, um, like fine furniture and nice, like grain and timbers and just like nice choices and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like in the course, um, I've built, uh, yeah, as I said, furniture, and um, I built like a cabinet for my mom, mm-hmm. um, a small table, like a little coffee table, awesome. Um, I've built stairs, doors, um. Wow all sorts of stuff. And then, um, yeah, once I finished college, um, once I finished my degree, oh, I, for my thesis in my degree, I built a child, a reproduction of Charles Eames, uh, leg splint, which Whoa. is, um, a world war two leg splint. It's like a piece of wood to keep your legs straight. When you break your leg out war, it's mm-hmm. like a, a full body stretcher before your leg. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, his, it's all made by bending um, plies of uh, wood, which mm-hmm. is how a skateboard is made. Oh. You know? So this is uh, why I did my thesis, was this piece. Oh. Um, it's supposed to technically build a piece of furniture, but the, the, the loophole I found was it had to be designed by a furniture designer. And oh. this was, this was a piece he made before he started furniture. Oh. Um, but um, yeah, I built this and this uh does like um because it's your leg you have to learn a lot of ergonomics like the the, the measurements and the shapes of people's uh, the human body yeah uh, so when it i go uh, when from I person think, to person yeah 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 depending on the person and stuff like that and you can have like um the 97.5 uh percent quartile so like there is between this and this, mm-hmm. it'll fit 97.5% of people. And there's just a few people that are very tall or very small that it won't fit, but it will fit most people. Cool. Um, so I have the entire book mm-hmm. on the measurement of it's a, a Henry Dreyfus's uh, measurement of man. And mm-hmm. it has every measurement of every part of, a, of the human body for men and women. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, yeah, we finished uh, college. Like it was just this leg splint. If I could bend this shape, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, I can I can bend any type of board I want. Mm. Um, yeah, I wanted boards with concave to match your feet because mm-hmm. of the ergonomic. Yeah, I saw your design. Yeah, it was all yeah, double true. concave, concave. Yeah, there's no, uh, rocker. There's no double. I like a flat center for your feet because mm. your feet are flat in the middle. Mm-hmm. So you need a hundred mil of at least of uh, flat in the middle. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, the concave is to match um, your feet. So one That's foot awesome. here for downhill and one here, your back foot here. Awesome. But then um, if you want, um, I skate uh, four different styles. I skate distance, downhill, free ride and park, <laughs> right? So. Distance boards are so different, they mm. cannot be the, like apart. But I tried to design a board that would do all three. Wow. So, this board is uh, set up for free ride at oh. the moment. But oh. all you have to do is put downhill wheels on it oh. um, and it's for racing. Mm-hmm. But if you want to use it in the skate park, mm-hmm. you just move the trucks in, you change it to TPPs. Oh. Oh. And you have a board ready for the park. That's brilliant, actually. And a big nose. Um, yeah. yeah. And then the pockets are in here. Yeah. And um, this section here for when you want to pop tricks or for in the bowl. And then between the wheel flare and the tail, you have a perfect pocket yeah. to pop. So, like, there is two sets of pockets. One for downhill huh. and then one for the park. That's brilliant. Um, yeah. So, I just tried to design the best, like, ergonomic um, cool. downhill free ride. Hard what board. about the weight? How uh, heavy it is? Uh, they're very light. Um, the oh, awesome. company I used to design for in Ireland, the, the boards were always heavy. Uh-huh. Um, so I always wanted to make them light. So um, I have a special uh, wood core construction. The wood is slightly different to normal skateboard construction. Yeah. Um, but then I have um, flax fiber and carbon fiber at uh, top and bottom. Okay. So the decks are to about one... 1.3 1.4 kilos that's um, like 1, grams yeah so they're they're pretty light 
Uh, it's funny when you're in the skate park with this because it's so wide and it's a little bit yeah. longer than a normal. Yeah. Um, street skaters look at it like you cannot do tricks on this. And <laughs> because it's so light and then I made a really steep tail, I uh-huh. like a lot of pop. Uh-huh. Um, they put an ollie like higher than their knees. They're like, but this board is so big. And it's like, <laughs> but it's light. Oh. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's, the tail is designed to match, you know. Cool. So. Ha, ha, have you yeah. seen the board of uh, Andy's uh, from Paul Perata? You know, uh, this ska- for skate tricks and everything. Yeah. That... yeah, yeah, I love this as well because it, 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 again, he does three styles of skating. Yeah, he does street, he does park, and he does uh, freestyle. Oh. so his board is to add, add all the features of these three together. Yeah, yeah. it's like. I call it a Swiss Army knife of boards. So this is what I try to do. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. How yeah. do you find the grip tape, longboard grip tapes for those things? Yeah, obviously skateboard um, grip tapes won't work. Yeah, so I say uh, locked on the most coarse grip tape in the middle and mm-hmm. uh, just where my feet go from downhill. Mm-hmm. But then on the nose and the tail, I mm-hmm. use normal 60 grip uh, for the park. Oh, okay, um, cool. Yeah, and... Um, yeah, it's yeah. That's that's my the boards I that's make awesome. now. That's awesome. That's awesome. Throws a little uh, li- uh, mm, mm, light on your virtual races experiences, like five, ten, and. Uh, um. So yeah. Um. Uh, the virtual races were really cool. Um. I found I've always uh, wanted to compete in them, but I I always wanted a good track because I'm competitive. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I wanted always good conditions. Um. But after. Uh, after doing the Dutch Ultra Skate mm. and finding that in the Netherlands they have the uh, so many of these tracks that are uh, made for cycling clubs to do training, mm-hmm. I thought there must be one or somewhere in Ireland, you know. Mm. And it turns out there is just one, <laughs> but but there is one in Dublin. Um, cool. So I checked out this track, mm. and um, this is where I did all of my um, all right. of my uh, races. Okay. Um, yeah. Cool. What, what were the kilometer distances were for the virtual races? Five, ten? Oh, so the first one was two kilometer sprint. Oh, okay. Uh, and then five kilometers, mm-hmm. ten kilometers. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the distance series mm-hmm. was one hour. So how far can you skate in one hour? A mm-hmm. uh, uh, hundred kilometers. Mm-hmm. And then a marathon for 2.2 kilometers to finish the series. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And you did all the virtual races without a GPS watch. You just used your phone. Yeah, I had my phone the whole time. That's <laughs> very inspiring because like a lot of the people back in back home in my place, you know, uh, they are yeah. more mostly coming from a very working class family. They can't afford a lot of things, including a skateboard, you know, sometimes. So yeah. giving this news, you know, this uh, smartphone has become more affordable these days. So it could help them. And you are inspiring. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, if you were to suggest something, you know, to people uh, who are conducting these virtual races, uh, being an angster, you know, if there are any Im- improving suggestions that you want to tell to Skate IDSA or something, you could go ahead and uh, give them. Um, they're doing pretty well. I like how the virtual races are on, that um, anyone in the world can participate. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, yeah, it's nice um, the way that, to make sure um, that you're not cheating, like going down a hill or something, that you must uh, come back to the same point as a circle mm-hmm. or out and back. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really cool. That it's, it makes it very accessible mm-hmm. um, for anyone. Yeah. Um, it's really nice. Um, I don't know. Um, the events are cool. Um, yeah, I'd like to, like every year it's uh, different events and I, I can't wait to see what the, the distances and the, the ideas were um, for this year. Mm. Um, I remember not uh, 2022, but 2021, they had a group event. Mm. So you randomly got put like four people from around the world together um, and you each skated uh, 25 miles um, oh. and the scores got added to make 100 cool. uh, miles per team. Um, cool. I think that could be cool like because um, um, it, it makes, um, you could chat to the person. You never know yeah. them before, but. More team, inclusive, team. yeah. You can like it's a cool way to, to make new friends. And that's stuff a beautiful like that. suggestion. <laughs> Hope skate ideas yeah, yeah. watch us with this video, you know. Uh that's awesome. Yeah, cool. cool, cool. Thank yeah, you. I really like that. 
being the only distance skater here, you know, it, <laughs> it makes me feel a part of something. Like I'm, I Marvin's in the Netherlands and we're oh. racing each other. Yeah, you know? like it, that's brilliant. Really nice it gives some friendly competition, even if your friends are overseas. Yeah, that's cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing uh, that wonderful idea with us. Uh, uh, have you got any plans to participate in other races outside Europe? Uh, outside Europe, not for this year. Mm. Uh, I would like uh, to maybe Miami Ultra, depending if it's n not too hot. Cool. And um, the heat, like it's always quite warm there. Um, I've been to Florida before and I've experienced that weather. And geez, it's it's humid, it's heavy, it's hot. So. <laughs> But it, it, it'd be cool to see the, that arena and the stadium. It's cool. Um, That's cool. Um, but I would love to do um, uh, Chief Adiga at some point, this Greenway oh, Trail race. Nice. Yeah, this is really cool. I'd like to do this event. Cool. Um, yeah. That's awesome. So uh, what are your plans uh, for 2023 uh, in regards to distance skating? Yeah. So um, I'm going to, again, do the virtual races. Mm. Um, and there is no um, Dutch Ultra this year. Um, yes. So I want, I wanted to go back. Yeah, hiatus for maybe a year. We should be back in 2024. Oh. Um, but I wanted to come back. For, I did 250 miles and got third place. I wanted to come back for first place in 300. You okay. know. Um, but, How about um, Misfits yeah. Flaming Runde? If that. Yeah. Happens. So. Um, I. Yeah, it's gonna happen. Um, I recently, like a couple of weeks ago, I got sponsored by a company. Oh. Um, yeah, we'll uh, wait for the official announcement uh, to see uh, who it is and how it goes. Um, but um, yeah, so because of this, I'll be participating in um, Flaming Runda and Misfits Marathon. Congratulations. Um, weekends apart so i can take two weeks and do two events in, in one trip super cool um yeah so i will do um the virtual series again um flaming runda and the misfits marathon for 2023 that's awesome that's awesome great to hear so uh, i guess we have uh, come to the end of our session our interview uh, it's been uh, wonderful talking to you uh, if you have any uh, uh, message for the distance skating community to share, you know, like there's stages yours, please go ahead, you know. Yeah. Um, just keep on pushing. Just like experience other styles of skating if you can. Um, I know a lot of people, um, like I've seen elitist street skaters that just say street skating is the only way to skateboard, but there is so many different ways to skateboard you can longboard dance you can push you can pump like you can uh uh surf skate you can downhill free ride like expand uh find a love for like skating and just um yeah try and make a community hopefully um i will try and organize some events uh, for ireland so i can Ooh. get some community over. that's um, awesome I've done, uh one or two events that could be really cool um but yeah try and find a community and if you don't have a community like yeah just uh, have fun and find like make, try and get people into it to see the the joy that you get out of it and stuff um yeah um yeah just push on a skateboard you know that's so nice of you so kind of you very compassionate that's awesome that's awesome staying inclusive is something you know, not everybody, you know, would uh, always vouch for, you know, that's incredible, actually. And it's very difficult yeah. to practice, actually, you know. <laughs> so I could see it in every way that you talk about, you know, that's uh, in, that's there in everything that you do, as I understand from the interview. It was incredible yeah, talking to you, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, please. Like, yeah, with the activities and stuff like that, it's just my way of, I have an idea mm. um, of, of, like, um, of an event that I want to like create or just like, you know, just going out for a day. It's like, this is the plan for the day. Mm -hmm. This is what I think will be fun. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you make the plan, you get people involved, your mm -hmm. friends, mm -hmm. and then you, you, it's fun creating the event or whatever, like the, the, the plan. Um, oh. And then you get to experience it together and have yeah. fun doing the thing that you said, Oh, we could do this. And like, just go out and do this for the day. Oh. And then, you experience it with your friends, you have fun, and then you have that memory, you know, to look back on. That's um, awesome. So it's just making fun Very memories noble. with people, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. 
that's cool sir i am so honored to talk with you you know like uh created a memory with you like as we talk about the yes, i uh, remember forget this interview christian like i'm so honored that someone wants to interview me like i i don't know like i know i do a lot of hobbies and stuff like that uh-huh. um but it's what i'm used to this is my life so to me i'm just paul and this is what i do but um yeah it, it surprises me when people uh, want to hear about it and stuff yeah to us you are very weird. special you're always special thank you thank you for uh, accepting and trusting me for this interview you know uh, nandri uh, this is the way we uh, convey our uh, you know uh, thankfulness to you uh, yeah. thank nandri. you very thank honored you. thank you uh, yeah